Hi folks, I've had this old uh, Champion lawnmower powered by Briggs & Stratton 35 Classic Engine. I've had this for about uh, a year now, I bought it sometime last year. And uh, the reason why is because I paid £10 for it I think. And when you pull the pull cord, it rips the pull cord out of your hand and nearly breaks your blinking fingers. So um, it's not been started at all, I couldn't start it, I did try to start it and it wouldn't start at all. So I'm presuming that the flywheel key has been knocked out of alignment by probably this lawnmower hitting something and as a result of that we've got to solve that problem because I'm going to actually pimp this lawnmower up. I'm going to paint it yellow, I'm going to get my cameo silhouette cutter out and reek out some only fools and horses lawnmower decals and I'm going to turn this into a custom trotters lawnmower. But first of all I just want to make sure that the um, the blade isn't damaged and the crank isn't bent before I go any further with this engine. And to do that, I'm gonna tip the mower back and rotate the crank and obviously see if the blade is damaged. So first of all, most important, well, I'll say most important, the plug won't even tighten it, look. Look at that, look. Totally black and sooted up as well, look. So that's, uh, Another thing, we didn't even look at this, as I said, we just tried to start it because the bloke said it just pulls out of his hand. So let's have a look underneath. So tipping the lawnmower back and looking underneath, the blade doesn't look like it's too bad, to be honest with you. It does need a sharpen, but um, rotating the crank, I can see that, that scent, there's no centre wobble there, indicating that the mower has damaged the crank at all. So I'm pretty happy that this crank isn't damaged at all. And if we look at either side, the gap either side from there to there is pretty much equal on both sides. So I'm happy that this crank is gonna be okay. And providing we can get this mower running, it should be a good and there shouldn't be any problems with it. So, first of all, what I'm gonna do is remove this top cover here just with these little 10 mil bolts, there's one there, one there, and one round that side. We'll expose the flywheel, we'll take the flywheel off, and we'll see if the flywheel key is damaged. So let's get that done. Right, so we've got the cover off now, that's only three bolts around the side. And uh, we're gonna take that flywheel key off now by undoing that big nut in the center there. That takes this outer cover off, and that then reveals the flywheel key which sits in the middle of this on the threaded part. We'll have a look at that. So this is a 24 millimeter nut. So we just put our impact wrench on there and just give it a good buzz. And it pulls that uh, nut off in no time as you can see there. So that'll enable us to remove the starter cup. That's the cup there that uh, the pull cord latches onto and spins the engine over. I'll just turn this round till we can see the key. Well, the key doesn't seem to have moved. There's a little woodruff key in there and it seems to be in line. I'm gonna remove it anyway, just so that we can have a look at the flywheel, make sure it is okay. It might be damaged further down, we don't know, but it looks to be in order. So that's normally the reason that your lawnmower pulls back and kicks back out of your hand. Right, folks, there's a few ways to get these uh, flywheels off. I have got one of these um, air hammer guns. And all I tend to do is to uh, get a pry bar just underneath the flywheel somewhere. Just give it a gentle lever and push down on that. And as you can see, it just lifts that up nicely. What if I press the handle down up there, take the brake off the flywheel. Just makes life a little bit simpler. There we go. And as you can see, that's just come off there now. Right, so our flywheel key in this case doesn't seem to be damaged at all. So uh, I don't think there's any problem with that. Maybe I'm thinking about the wrong lawnmower. Maybe this wasn't that lawnmower that um, had the flywheel issue. As I say, it's one of many that's been laying around in the garden. So uh, yeah, I think that's going to be okay. Looking at the channel there. The channel doesn't seem to have been disturbed at all. So no, this is okay. So... I might as well slip that back on. But before I do that, I'm gonna just stick it in the uh, sandblaster and give it a little sandblast. Right, so I've just give that a quick sandblast. I might give that a coat of lacquer afterwards just to keep it uh, from tarnishing in the future. 
So we're at the stage now where I basically think this engine's going to be okay. It's a Briggs & Stratton. They run on forever unless there's something really seriously wrong with them, like the valves or something like that. So let's get this little mouse stripped down. I need to get down to the bare deck because we've got to strip all the paint off of that. And then we've got to change the colour and paint it yellow. But in this case, if I've got some yellow powder coat, I might powder coat instead. So let's start stripping this down, folks. And I'll put you on a bit of time lapse for that. Okay, folks, there we go. That's the deck stripped down to its bare essentials. Thank you for sharing, for bringing me out a nice cup of tea. So, this was a champion lawnmower, as you can see there, made in Italy. This is the 2005 model. Uh, it's got R434 on there, whether that's the model number or what, I don't really know, but uh, it's not going to be that anymore, it's going to be a trotter's mower. And to do that, I've got to get this deck stripped right the way down, see if there's any big problems with it. I can see a bit of bubblage here. It doesn't appear to be broken through in any place, but uh, when they paint these things, there's literally just a coat of paint on there. There's no primer on these, so for 2005 model, bearing in mind it's probably been out in all sorts of weather, so it's not actually done too bad. Some of these really go bad, but uh, as you can see, Underneath it's the surface rust that gets to them and it just lifts the paint and that's when they start to deteriorate. They normally rot from below on the way through sort of thing, but uh, this is where obviously, look at that, look. They're literally just quickly painted over. But uh, we're not worried about that because that's all going anyway. Look at that, look. See? And if you jet wash your lawnmower, this can happen a lot quicker because jet wash will actually lift this up in no time and then you'll be left with a bare mower which will just rot out in no time especially if it's left outside so looking underneath it they normally go around these edges here which this all looks to be solid although that's been the um, got grass collected up around it but uh, this one isn't too bad to be honest with you but i'm going to give this a good wire brushing underneath we'll end up hammer in all this underneath black i could get the um paint stripper on this i think i will the power strip paint stripper and then finish it off with the DA so I'm gonna do that now folks right so first of all I think it's best to scrape some of this crap out of there I'm not too worried about this really at the moment but um, I'll just hit it with a wire brush and uh, get the most of it out I will be hammer writing this as I've said to you so um, that will seal everything in anyway and I'll probably treat it with a vector and rust treatment as well And as you can see, I'm just scraping off the last bit of the uh, flaky paint now. It really does come off easy, but as I say, these aren't got any primers or any X primers on them at all. And this is the stuff I use. This is a power strip paint stripper. It's probably one of the stronger ones on the market. Things like Nitromores are nowhere near as strong as they used to be. So I just paint it on liberally, and sometimes you have to go over it a couple of times. But in reality, it probably won't get it all off, but um, that doesn't really bother me in this case. Okay, folks, well, the deck has been completely stripped down now, and I've also gone over the rusty parts with some Vactan rust treatment, and the underneath has been all scraped off and cleaned out, and then I'm going to hammer right this, and we're going to do a special thing, which I didn't realise you could do. I've only just found out. But you can put hammerite 
in the oven and bake it at about 150 to 160 degrees centigrade as well. And that really hardens it off. So I'm gonna be doing that as well, painting the underside with hammerite. Then I'll powder coat the top side and we'll put it in the oven and it'll all bake off together, the underside and the top side. So all the rust has gone bluey gray and that goes again, like all the way around the lawnmower, all around the back of it. It's all been treated as you can see. So what I'm gonna try and do is give that one final wipe over with a wax and grease remover. And we're gonna actually try and powder coat directly over this, the vac tan. I'm not gonna rub that back or nothing. So we'll see how that goes. I've never done that before. So um, that'll be interesting to see how that comes out. So all I'm gonna do now, flip it over, give it a hammer right, and then we'll powder coat it and put it in the oven to bake it. Now you may notice as well that I've not actually taken every single piece of paint off there. As I say, don't be worried if you do leave the odd speck of paint on. As long as it's not flaky or it's standing proud, it's all sanded down uh, to a nice smooth edge, so to speak, and it's solid paint anyway, so I'll be, paint, I'll be powder coating directly over the top of that. So let's break the hammerite out, get the underneath hammerited. We'll then let that dry. We'll powder coat it in our yellow powder coat, and then we'll bake it all together, the hammerite as well. And that will come out rock hard, as I've said to you. So let's get on with that now. So while that paint's going off, as you saw on the time lapse, we're stripping the engine down now, and I'm just about to take this old exhaust off now. And I don't know whether you can see or not, but the actual oil that's in this exhaust is, is well, it's, it's obviously been tipped up, or it's been overfilled. One of the two. Look at the state of them bolts there. Look, all the oil on them. Look, that's really heavy with oil. And if we look in the exhaust port, I mean, if I tip that up, you can probably see oil run out of there. So we might have found our issue. This might not have been a timing issue. Look, it could have been sort of hydro lock. When you try to pull it, there was just too much oil pressure in there. Look at the oil in that. Look, it's saturated. So we confirmed that it doesn't look like that's the problem. And we've just found this. I would suggest that this is the problem and this is going to be hydro locked. That's why it was really, really hard to pull out of your hand. So I've nearly got the engine down to its uh, bare essentials now. And uh, I'll, I will give it a, a lick of paint as well. But uh, what I might do is actually take these head bolts off and just to have a look inside the cylinder head, just to see if we can confirm that it's been overfilled. So let's just nip these off. And this is the beauty of these little Briggs Classic engines, these flathead ones, that there's no valves or whatever to uh, worry about. And valve tongue, I mean, or cams or whatever, you just literally unbolt it very much like a two stroke. Right, okay. So if we lift that off there, keep them in order. All these bolts are the same length, there's no need to worry about them, folks. And let's just give that a gentle tap. And I'm hoping to see loads of oil in here. And there he is, look at the state of that, look. 
You can see where it was collected in there, look. And can you see it running out of here now? Look, let's show you. Pouring out of the exhaust port there, look. So this was obviously well full of oil. And uh, we just pulled the piston down the bore and we can see that the bore is actually in very good condition. You can't really see that, but uh, I can. So I'm happy that um, everything's in order. And while we're here, we're looking at the valves going up and down. So the inlet valves, the exhaust valves opening there and the inlet valves opening. So we know that they're working correctly because I've actually seen these valves miss. The valve seats pop out as well as on some of these engines and uh, you have to tap them back in and then sort of put a little punch to hold them in again, the uh, valve seats around there. But uh, everything seems to be okay there, so I'm not too worried about that. One thing I will check while we're here is if I take the valve out and then just move it sideways, you're looking for minimal movement. There's a little bit of movement on that engine, but not too much. On the inlet valve, let's try the exhaust valve. That's normally a sign of wear that they can burn oil. There's a little bit of movement there, but nothing out of the ordinary. I've had them where they've gone really flappy, flappy like that. And one of the symptoms is, is that they might start all right when they're cold, but when they're warm, they're a bugger to start. That can be warm valve guides, just to let you know that. Right, so I'm just going to go about cleaning this engine up now. You haven't really got to see that. I'll be just doing a wire, a brush, and uh, probably things like the head gasket there, for example. I'll probably put that in the sandblaster. Get all that crap off of there as well and also clean the valves up and the, the gasket seal around there and give the engine a bit of a paint up and i'll see you a little bit later on and hopefully we'll be doing some powder coating on that deck see you in a minute Right folks, I've done a bit of cleaning. I've uh, cleaned that cylinder head up now, as you can see. That's been sandblasted, as you can see the underside of it now. It's just like a new cylinder head. I'm gonna paint this with heat protective paint or heat resistant paint. I've cleaned the old coil up. These do suffer from rust, these things. And I'm just gonna give that a little coat of paint just to protect it from going rusty. That's all nice and uh, ready to install now. And over here, I've also prepared these brackets there, the engine brackets there, as you can see, some guards and stuff like that. There's the uh, speed control bracket there that goes on the front. So they're all cleaned down as well. They've been sandblasted and they had a wipe down with some acetone. So I'm gonna actually paint them brackets with, not paint them, powder coat them with titanium silver. This is my setup, as you probably know, from Electrostatic Magic. So let's just whack that on there and see what we've got. That'll do. Where's my mask? Let's see it. Got someone interrupting me, folks, in here, look. I've got to make sure he knows how to use it all properly. I taught him what to do, yeah? Unbelievable. Check, right, eh? Hey? Check out Project Man channel. Get rid of Project Man. Right, let's get going, folks. So the gun's probably to about 5 PSI. And all I'm going to do, I, there is an earth strap, which, or a grounding strap, which you can take off of here and put around your wrist or whatever, but I just hold that copper pipe there and literally just, just dust it on and it works fine. There we go. That's one done. That's two done. Just turn it around the other way, I want to get all them. There we go. That's done. Let's put them in the oven. And this is the oven I built, folks, and it's up to 200 degrees C at the moment, so it's well hot enough. I'm just gonna shut that door and quickly put the other bits in. And these will cook in here for about 10 to 12 to 15 minutes, something like that. Let's put them in there. Shut the door. And we'll come back and see that whoo, in about 15 minutes time. Right, I've got the yellow powder coat now, so let's put that on. Sorry about the fan noise, folks, but uh, 
got to have it on. I forgot it last time. All right, okay. Here we go. Right, let's get these bits out. These should be ready. Oh yeah. There we go. Freshly powder coated. There we go. Let's close that door up for a minute. There we go. Titanium silver. Now I've got to be a bit careful now folks because um, the oven's well hot. I'm going to open that door for a minute. Just clip that on there like that. And open that door. We've got to get this in now. Let's have a go at this folks. There we go, one up there. One up there. Oh, right. Let's shut that door. It might go in just there with that handle, but we'll, we'll give it a go anyway. If it touches, it touches, I can touch it up afterwards. It's fine. Right. Now, that's gonna take a little bit longer, folks. So I've just gotta give it a visual indication. You've gotta wait till the actual park gets up to uh, 180 degrees, not the oven, so I'll be checking with the laser thermometer. And when it's done, we'll pull it out. If we've missed any bit, it's not a problem. We can always go back and put it back in afterwards. It's not a problem. So anyway, I'll see you in a minute. Right, it's been about 20 minutes, folks, and I'm a little bit disappointed because where I put the vac tan, it's not taken. So let's show you what it's turned out like. I'm gonna have to redo it again. So let's get that door open. So as you can see, everywhere where there was no vac tan, it's absolutely fantastic. Everywhere where the vac tan was, look, it's come up. It's, it's come up, so you can't do it on top of vac tan. Not a nice way to find out, but that's the way I've had to learn, so to speak. So. It's not too much of a problem. I've just got to wait for it to go dry and then I'll just sand down where the vac tan was and uh, obviously then recoat it again. But uh, apart from that, everything else has turned out good. The actual colour's perfect actually. So uh, just a bit disappointed, but not, can't be. I had to try it because I wanted to find out whether you could put a powder coat over vac tan and there you go. You can't, folks. So there we go, folks. Not very happy with that. Where it's been normal metal, as you can see, it's taken really nice. But uh, it don't like being over vac tan. So I'm going to sand all that down. We're just in the vac tan areas and then repowder coat it. And then we'll see what happens because it's all around the side as well. Look, how bad does that look, folks? Right, folks, I've rubbed it all down, as you know. I've put it back in there. It may not be perfect, but it's going to have to do. Let's have a look at it. Oh, it's a lot better. I can see a couple of little spots, but overall, it's really a lot better than what it was. Well, I think you'll agree, folks, that uh, it's a hell of a lot better. There is a little bit there, but that's going to be under the engine, and a little bit there. But everything else, so far, by well, what I can see, the tops and all that seem to be okay. The front has come out lovely now, as you can see. Uh, yeah, I think we've I think we've cracked it. It's as good as it's going to get anyway. I don't really want to have to go to the hassle of uh, treating that little bit again, as you can see. It's only a slight little bit of bubblage, but that is completely under the engine, so uh, I'm happy with that. Can I see underneath there? It looks pretty much okay, I think. We'll let it cool down, and then I'll get it out. Now I've been tackling this exhaust here while I've been waiting. I've just put the older glow lamp on it. 
to burn out some of this oil that was inside it. And uh, I've been going at this for about five minutes. I think I've got most of it out now. It's just cooling down now. It was flaming before, so um, I think we've uh, done a good job here. Yeah, there's no more flames coming out of that now, folks, is there? I'm going to have to let that cool down for a minute. All flames were coming out of there and there and underneath there. So it burnt off all the oil, I think, so hopefully that should be okay now. Just let it cool off. Give it a paint up with some heat resistant paint and uh, that should be ready to fit. So there you go folks, Just a, I'm going to do a two parter on this, I think it's fair. The video could be a bit long otherwise, but uh, just to show you everything doesn't always go to plan. Sometimes things happen and hopefully I've shown them in this video. We've learned that you can't put a powder coat straight on top of vac tan. You've got to rub it down again until it's bare metal and that's the way you have to do it. If I wouldn't have done that on there, you might have found out in one of your projects, but it meant I had a lot more work to do, sanding it back and all that, but it seems to have turned out all right. What else have we got there? Um, these brackets, as you can see now, they've been lovely and powder coated. They've come out really nice now, that's titanium silver. So you don't have to do this, this is just because it's a little special mower sort of thing, you know, so, uh, and I've got the gear, so I might as well do it. And at the end of the day, it's my hobby, I enjoy doing it. So I've just got to strip the rest of the engine down, clean it down, and then I'll paint that with um, a heat resistant black or something like that. But uh, yeah, so there we go. A few little odds and sods just to sort out here. Then I can refurbish all the lawnmower parts on it and um, put it back together in the next video. So hopefully we'll see the whole thing done in part two. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. See you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.